Of the wildlife in the swamp, the American black bear occupies a very large place, very near the top. Uh, this is a young black bear. This is a bear that was killed uh, over in Pierce County, and he was about uh, four, maybe three and a half feet long. Uh, they, they, they get a little bigger than that, not much. The very heavy black coat. Notice the, the black coat, and we need a close-up for this. Uh, there is a very heavy guard hair. There's two kinds of hair on most, most animal hides, guard hairs and, and, and warm inner hairs. There's a, the, the, the warmer inside, and this bear was killed in the winter. Uh, because he already has his winter coat on here. The very heavy, thick undercoat. Good insulation. Down here, that's not much of a problem. Up north, where it really gets cold, even to North Georgia, it, it gets cold and, and down to zero many nights. Uh, but down here, bears lead a, a pretty comfortable life most of the year. They're very warm most of the year. <clears throat> Their hair is like most hair. It, it has a root. Every hair has a root. The DNR census, it takes the census of the bear population based on the root hairs, based on the, and so they set what they call a hair trap. A hair trap consists of a specified number of, of bob wire that goes around the tree this way and a, a specified number and length of bob wire this way so that then they nail one or two cans of sardines in the middle of this bob wire. Well, <laughs> and of course, so that, that oil runs out and permeates the entire environment around it downwind. Well, bears are extremely good, have great sense of smell. Polar bears even can smell a seal 50 miles away over snow and ocean, 50 miles away. Now that is sensational, but down here these bears they, they, they have still have a very good sense of smell. They have good hearing and good sense of smell. <clears throat> so, as the bear comes to the, to, the, to the bait, as the bear comes to the bait, as they often do, bears hug a tree. And, and so they, and they, they're doing their best to get that sardines out of them cans. And by the time they get all the sardines out, and don't cut their tongue off. <laughs> they, they have, they have tied, wrapped around many, many of those hairs uh, are pulled out on his belly here. On the belly part, these hairs are pulled out and they select any seven of those hairs, the long black hairs, not the undercoat, not the little fuzzy ones underneath. Um, and they, <clears throat> those seven then are examined for a root. They have to have a, the, the, the little bulb on the bottom of a hair because that's where the DNA is. And they take any five of those and send them off to this lab somewhere over in Montana or something like that. And they, uh, they then do a DNA analysis, send back their report, and they know the history of this bear. They know how old he was, they know, uh, they know when he was born, they know something about his diet. They can tell if it's a male or a female. They can also tell if she's, if she's had cubs, they know how many cubs she's had. Uh, it is amazing what's in here. <clears throat> uh, then uh, another analytical is the, is the teeth. They take, a bear's, the bear skull, 
and I, I don't have the bare skull here, but they take the bare skull and they take the second premolar. They take the second premolar and um, they take this, that, and they, they pull it. They pull that tooth <clears throat> and they do this at every check-in station. Every check station does this. And they send, send that tooth off. They decalcify that tooth and then they, they but what's left is, is a fibrous material, gelatinous, but it's got all this history of the, the life of the bear in, the, in, the, in that root. <clears throat> uh, to enhance that analysis, they also add tetracycline to, to their diet. They put out corn that has tetracycline. The one complaint that doctors had about the mycins, the tetracyclines, they, they make the baby teeth turn yellow. They're in yellow. Does the same thing to the bear. <laughs> exactly the same thing to the bear. So they bait their corn, sometimes with tetracycline tainted corn. Then it becomes, a, it becomes, it does the same thing in the bear. It makes a growth ring, a growth ring in the tooth uh, that becomes, uh, that, that, turns a bright yellow ring inside under certain dyes that they dye the tooth with. Uh, by the way, they, can, they decalcify the tooth. What's left is a fibrous material that can be sliced and analyzed under the microscope, and they can tell, they can see how old he was. They can tell uh, also about how many cubs she's had. Bears are omnivores. Bears are truly omnivores. They will eat absolutely anything, even the bark off of a tree. They eat vegetation. They will eat, if they find a dead possum that's been there for a week, <laughs> they eat that. Carrion offers no resistance at all to the bear. They'll eat it. They, uh, they, they obviously catch things like fish and frogs and ducks and they, they catch any mammal on the ground, any man, and even those that climb trees, because bears are excellent climbers. They can climb a tree just as quick as, quick as a squirrel. They can chase him right up a tree. Uh, they, uh, they also use the restroom like all other animals, and we call it scat. In the polite language, it's called scat. And it comes out right back here at the anus. And that's a part of his diet. And th that has, is a treasure trove of information because the DNR, the Department of Natural Resources biologists, look for, for bear scat. They actually analyzed in a, in a four, five year investigation in the swamp, uh, 1,428 piles of bear scat. <laughs> so they were experts, but they could analyze the, what he eats. They could analyze, you know, all the seeds, the nuts, the berries, any, any kind of vegetation, any bones, and, and they had, could identify the bones, bones or scales, feathers, all of these things, all, everything was identified. So that too is a, is a very rich source of information. Uh, I, I see here, this, these animals have very large claws. These, these claws are extremely strong and sharp. Um, so he, he has no problem at all climbing, climbing a tree. Mr. Al Ferguson and uh, his friend uh, were out in Double Lakes one day fishing. And Double Lakes is right up there near the, not too far from the entrance of Kingfisher. And uh, they saw this bear jump off the, uh, jump off the peat bed, 
splashed in the water and was blatantly swimming right across <laughs> double lakes and about halfway across he just disappeared just went down and never came up again he, of course he drowned and what happens was the gator stuffed him under a log or something down there and let him ripen up a little bit so he could come back and have lunch you know, in the water he's the gator is the top man in the, up on the hill any up on the peat bed, anything above the, above the water line, right here. Now, it would be a tremendous fight, but this is a very powerful animal too. He doesn't have that rolling ability that gators have, uh, but he, he certainly has the strength to hold that gator and stop that roll. Mating occurs any time during the year. And she has the ability to delay implantation. She can, she can stop that fertilized egg from implanting in the wall of the uterus so it doesn't grow. It just ceases to, it's just a, a dead entity in the uterus. And then for some reason she, she has the, also has the ability to start development and implantation and, and the formation of a placenta and all the necessary things that necessary for that. And the cubs are usually born in the dead of winter, in the den. The bears up north, do, up where you live, they don't really sleep. They are in a, in a, has a, in a suspended state but they're still aware of what's going on around them. They, 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 they're aware that she, she will be aware that she has young. One, two, three, and one in, um, one fella, one photographer in New Hampshire found a mother bear with five, five offspring. And, and I have this, I have pictures from one year to the next year. It's on that, it's on the tape that you have. But anyhow, he, he, he finally waited long enough and he got all five bears in a photo in say um, uh, uh, October. The next spring he went back and patiently waited, and patiently waited, and you know how that is. <laughs> until all five bears was, I mean, all six bears, mama and five babies were, were there again. And they, you could see obvious, here's the little babies and over here's the big bears, how much they grew in one year. Um, and it was amazing that all five of them had survived, that the, some hunter hadn't killed one or more of them. Uh, so, but five is extremely unusual and survival is even more of a miracle. Um, so there's some there's some love stories in there too about the bears and the animals they re relate to in the swamp. Um, 